Week 8 auxiliary reviews. Uh, the first auxiliary review taken from a part is called a primary auxiliary review. If you take an auxiliary review from a primary auxiliary review, you get a secondary auxiliary review, and so on and so forth. After we call the third one is a tertiary, after that, it's just called the fourth auxiliary review. Auxiliary reviews are an orthographic view. They have all rules, they have center lines, they have uh, hidden lines. They're just like an, a normal orthographic view, except they're taken from a different direction, viewed from a different direction than the normal views are viewed from like the front, back, left, right, top, bottom. So there's an infinite number of auxiliary reviews. Auxiliary reviews can be complete or full, meaning they show the whole object. They can be half of it. Uh, just showing half of it. If you, if a hand draftsman was crunched for time, uh, he might only draw half the auxiliary view, just half the view, um, left or right half. Uh, you can do a partial view of a part using auxiliary views, or you can just do just the plane. If you wanted to draw just a plane that you're looking perpendicular to, that saved time uh, for a hand draftsman if he only had to draw the plane he was looking perpendicular to. Uh, with NX, uh, since you already have the model done, to create just the plane would actually, you'd have to create the auxiliary view, then delete all the lines that weren't the, the view you wanted, that weren't the plane that you wanted, so it actually take you more time to create less information. So why do we do an auxiliary view? In order to get the true view of an inclined or oblique plane that you can't see from a normal view, in true view. Uh, to get uh, a dihedral angle or an angle between two intersecting planes or to reduce the number of necessary views or to better show the part with an equal number of views. We always want to be efficient in our views. We can also with auxiliary views get a point view of a line by looking down a line, uh, projecting down a line. We get the true length of a line within a plane or we can get an edge view of a plane. There's different methods uh, folding line method, reference line method, if you're working with hand tools. General guidelines for auxiliary views, as stated here, a plane is true view if it appears as an edge view and an adjacent view. That's the important thing to remember. That's what you're going to have to do for your uh, exam number two within X. In order to get, a, when I say give me a true view of this plane, you need to have that plane as an edge view in one view and then project from that edge view plane. Uh, I'll show the rest of these, uh, how to create this. These guidelines were for hand sketching of voxel reviews, which you don't have to do. We used to do one more homework problem doing a hand sketch of an auxiliary review. Instead, we substituted uh, another assembly of NX. So let's go to this one here. Two views of a plane in space. The same plane, two different views. Front view, right side view. Any of these lines true length? Any of them? No, they're not. The definition of a true length line is if a line is parallel to a reference line between two adjacent views, then in the adjacent view, the line is true length. So if one of these lines was was a vertical line, it would be parallel with the reference line, and over in this view, it would be true length. Since none of these lines are parallel to the reference line, none of these lines in the right side view are true length. Similarly, since none of these lines are parallel to the reference line, then in the front view, none of those lines are true length, which means we have an oblique plane here. There are an infinite number of points on a plane as well as on a line. So if I were to take and create a line that r runs on line P from point one straight down vertically to where it hits uh, between points two and three, call that point A, we now have a line that is parallel to the reference line. And if we find that same point by projection over here, then that point 1A over here would be a true length line. So here now we have a true length line in the right side view. You're thinking, how can we have a true length line on plane P in the right side view if the other lines aren't true length? Well, that's because plane P in the right side view is rotated on that true length line. That's why 
1, 2, 2, 3, and 1, 3 are all foreshortened, but line 1A is not. We then create a reference line to create our first auxiliary view. We create a reference line perpendicular to the true length line, and we're going to project across the reference line down the true length line. So here we are projecting across the reference line into where the auxiliary view, what we call auxiliary view B, our primary auxiliary view will be. And related views rule number two states, how do you find the points in here? How are these two views related? The view and the primary auxiliary view? Uh, they're related in this manner. We project from the adjacent view. We measure from the related view. So these two views, our auxiliary view up here and our right side view are related, or sorry, are adjacent across the reference line. And the front view is related through the adjacent view to the primary auxiliary view. So we measure from this reference line to like point one, or in this case, I think I did the point three. So from, from here to, to, from reference line to point three is 1.29 inches. And the same here from point three from the reference line, 1.29 inches up this projection line parallel with the true length line perpendicular to the reference line is point three. We'd also project up one and A along here and they'd be right there. And we project two perpendicular to the reference line along the length here. And that would length here to here. And if you notice, since we're looking down a line that runs true length and runs down the plane, if you look at a line that runs along a plane, from endpoint to endpoint of that line, you get the plane and edge view. So these lines all line up, three, one, and two, into an edge view of a plane. So plane P is an edge view in our primary auxiliary view. If we then take a secondary auxiliary view, and we do that from an edge view of a plane by passing a reference line, our uh, reference three parallel to the auxiliary view B, and then projecting across it perpendicular. Again, this time the distances are from the adjacent view to the point. So from here to point two is the same thing as from, sorry, over here. From here to point two is from here to point two, and so on and so forth. We end up getting one, two, three as a true view plane in our secondary auxiliary view. Or another way to say it is we get a true view plane when we project off from an edge view of a plane or a plane in edge view. That's how we did it in the old school when I was in college. Aren't you glad you don't have to do it this way? So with NX, of course, you can manipulate a solid or a plane of a solid a lot more easily, but this is, this is the theory behind it.